My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So for those that know me, you might know me as the sticker making guy. You know, I made a course on how to make handmade stickers. I also made a course on how to augment graffiti art with sticker slaps. And so now with this one, part three of my sticker making series, we're gonna be looking at augmented stickers. In this course, we will be learning how to create an animated and augmented sticker. We'll use some core principles of animation to create something magical you can share on any digital platform. And after we animate it, we will learn how to augment the physical sticker using that animation and the augmented reality process. And so if you want to learn more about this wonderful project, check it out at stuckonisland.com slash courses or check it out on Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. Okay, so welcome to Animated and augmented stickers. This course is best for intermediate creators, those that have a basic understanding on how to create art. And this is also a continuation of my a sticker making course that I created the sticker for. And so if you haven't checked out the sticker making course, make sure to do that. And you should have a good foundation of the rendering process that I use there. And then from there, also being able to use the Unity game engine. And so we will be able to go over some basic stuff, but this isn't a, a foundational course. Uh, this is a course that builds off of other courses that I have and really allows you to dive deep into animation and augmentation uh, based off of the skills that I introduce in other courses. But if you want to follow along, it's really easy to follow along. So feel free to uh, follow along with this. And so the agenda for this course is split up into two parts. We have part one, which is animating the sticker. And this is where you learn to animate, or at least I show my process of animating, which is storyboarding, adding in-betweens, adding anticipation, adding an overshoot, cleaning it up, and then adding some color. And then also throughout that process, I'll be adding some tips to make the animation more dynamic. And then in part two, it's all about augmenting the sticker. And this is how to bring the sticker to life with augmented reality and using the Unity Editor and Vuforia Engine to create an augmented sticker. And the tools you'll need for part one are obviously animation software. So I'm gonna be using Adobe Animate, but these principles apply to any animation software that you use because it's all focused on keyframes and how to approach those keyframes for making fluid motion. And then obviously you'll need a computer and a mouse or a tablet. Uh, I'm using a tablet, but you're more than welcome to use a lot of different things. If you have an iPad, you can use Procreate with the iPad or any uh, animation tool that you would like. For part two, 
you'll need the Unity Game Engine, the Vuforia Engine SDK, a digital version of your sticker, and a webcam or mobile phone. And so now that we got all that covered, let's animate a sticker. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create animation based on our sticker design that we had from our previous class, or you could use the design that I created in the last class to start off your animation. So how to animate? Animation I create uh, follows some simple steps. And essentially, if you follow these steps, you can pretty much animate anything. And so those steps are storyboarding the keyframes, uh, creating in-betweens, adding anticipation, creating some follow through or overshooting the animation and then adding some cleanup and obviously coloring at the end. So before we get started with some animation, what I'll do is I'll actually go through and give you a brief rundown of what all these different steps are. And so if you look here at the bottom, you'll see that there's a, a timeline here and each one of these dots is a different drawing. And so right now I have the storyboard face. And actually before the storyboard phase, I actually have a, a plan phase where I figure out what are the things that I want to do. And then after I do that, I go ahead and create a storyboard based off of the things that I wrote down. And so the storyboard, they're just key poses that I have. And it's normally just like a minimal of, you know, two to three, uh, one for the beginning and the end of a motion. And then afterwards, I had some in-betweens. And that's what this next layer is. And what the in-betweens do are they essentially are the bridge between the different keyframes that I have. And so you'll see that they are always going to be in between keyframe one, two, and three. And typically they are the, the light blue ones here. So we have a light blue one, light blue one, and light blue one. And then I'll add some anticipation before the light blue to lead into that motion. And I'll have that in orange. And then I'll also have a follow through or an overshoot, which is going to be in dark green, which uh, precedes that motion. And so it goes beyond the motion and then it bounces back. Then after I have those, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start cleaning up. And all that means is you're going to be going ahead and adding some black lines and making those lines cleaner. And so it goes from the sketchy lines to something clean. So sketchy lines, and then I have the clean lines. And then afterwards, you're going to go and color it. And at the end, that's what we got. And now, when we play it all together, we have a fluid motion. And so let's go ahead and follow these steps and let's get it started. And so in this section, we're gonna be storyboarding some keyframes. And this is focused on creating key poses for your animation that shows the beginning and ending of a movement. And so let's go ahead and get that started. So what I have here is this program called Adobe Animate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start create by creating a new file. So just go to create new. And what I'll do is I'll create a full HD file and I'll start this at 12 frames per second. And 12 frames per second is a, a pretty standard one. Uh, doesn't require me to do a lot of frames but it'll also have some pretty decent motion. And so this, this is sort of the best of both worlds for uh, creating something in a quick manner, but also having it look pretty decent. So I'll go ahead and create. And then what we have is our viewport right here. So I'll go to fit to window. And in Adobe Animate, this works off of keyframes and being able to draw. So I could draw with my brush, as you can see here, and it looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
my actual sticker to this. And so this is my sticker that I have, and I'm going to create, scale it up a little bit. And I'll just go like that. And so this is my sticker, and I'll have this one my own layer. So sticker layer. And so now that I have my sticker layer, first thing I'll do is obviously save it. So I'll go to save and I will go to my folder that I want. You know, animate. And so with the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to just do a plan. So I'm going to just create a plan layer and this plan layer is going to give me an opportunity to uh, write down some of the poses that I want to add or want to create. So what I'll do is just write down plan and so he has his hands on his hips right now and so the first thing I'll do is I'll say, so we'll say hands on hips. So that's the first one, the starting pose. And then he will do a dance with one hand up, one down, and hips rocking. like that. So pretty simple. And so having a plan is always really good to to start off with so that you're not guessing you're at least thinking things through a little bit it doesn't have to be fleshed out but thinking it through is always great. And so from there, I'll start off with the storyboard. And so what I'll do is I will actually create a guide layer for both of these. And then I'll turn this, make this transparent and I'll lock these two. Perfect. And so the next thing that I'll do is I'll actually just trace out my first one. So I'll just trace all the line work.
And so now that we have that, right, we could actually just hide this away. We'll just make sure I add the mouth. We should be able to hide that. So now we have our first storyboard. And so the next thing that we could do is we could add a keyframe. With that keyframe, it allows us to uh, create a new image. And so I'll turn on this thing called an onion skin. And what that allows us to do is create uh, different keyframes based off of our uh, based off of being able to see the other ones that we have and so this is going to be great for the anticipation and the in-betweens that we have but just having a reference is always good too and so in it I'll have two different key poses and so i'll create just two different keyframes by having two different key poses and so the first key pose is um him with his one hand up and one hand down and uh having his hips rocking and so we could start off again by having his feet here And if his hips are rocking, I'll say that we could have them like this. So it requires him to have his knees bent. And if his knees are bent, then his hips are sort of up into the side. We'll say that his shoulders will be different. They'll be rocking as well. So you kind of want to have a only have him like rocking from side to side. So if his shoulders are slanted one way, his hips are going to be slanted the other way. It's typically how it goes. And then we'll have his hands, one hand up. And then what I'll do is I'll just have his face sort of looking in one way. like that
And then what I could actually do is I could copy this keyframe. And I'll paste it. But this time I can select it and align it or use the transform tool right here. And I could do flip horizontal. What that'll do is, and I could move it and align the feet. And what that'll do is it'll copy that frame. And so now if I turn on the onion skin, I have this right here. So hands on hips, dance with one hand up, one down, and hips rocking like that. And those are our storyboards. So now that we have our storyboards, it's time to use the key poses that we did as references to create frames that show the movement of the characters being animated. And so essentially think about these as uh, transitions from one keyframe to the next. We have three key poses, so we're going to at least have two to three in-betweens. And so when we're here, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy and paste a keyframe and this is going to be the first keyframe that we have and the reason I'm doing that is because I want this animation to loop and so we could have an we could actually get rid of this keyframe later but what I'll do is I'll create a, a loop that goes back to this keyframe to be the last actual frame and so what I'll do is I will go to a different color and so I'll just start off with the blue And then I'll add a new keyframe for each one of these different frames here. And so I'll add my onion skin, and this is perfect for what I want. And then I will actually go through and start to animate. So I'll just start to zoom in and really what I want to do is for in-betweens all you're thinking about is creating a shape from this shape to this shape right here. That's really all this is focused on just creating a shape from this to this. So I want to start off with the eyes. Because the eyes are really easy to do because they're just circles. And so what I'll do is I'll say I want to make a circle or a shape in between that. So I'll make a shape in between the eyes right here. So we have this eye, we have this eye, so I'll make a shape in between that. And then this one, I'll make a shape in between this one. Like that. The next one I'll do is the nose. And so we have this shape and this shape. So I'll just make one that's kind of like this. Has a slight tint to it and voila. Then this one here. So we have the mouth here and here. So I'll just do something like this. And then obviously the head. So the head is going to be a little tricky because they're at two different angles. So say this one is going forward and this one's to the side. I'll have this one be no. like this. Actually, I'll make it just a little smaller. And it doesn't have to be perfect just because this is going to be a split second. And so you'll have opportunities to, to fix it and rectify it later with the cleanups. I just want to get the shape right first. And 
And so with the hairline, the hairline is kind of weird. So we have it here and we have it here. So we could say that the hairline could be in this area. And then with the hair, we'll say that the hair obviously can start off like right here. And then we just have it going around in between these. So now if I turn off the onion skin, this is what we have. And so I can clean it up a little bit. That's what we have. So so now let's go ahead and add our feet, obviously. We'll add the feet and we'll have it just slight bent. And we'll see that this is down lower. So then what we'll do is just have it at an angle kind of like this. And this will be a slight bend here. This will obviously be down here. So we're just sort of going to in between the points and in between the lines of the other figure. Boom. And so with the body, right, we still have this here, so we'll have that. And then we'll have this. So it's a, it's a slight bend, but it's not a large bend. And then we still have the shoulder. So we'll still have the shoulder here. And we'll say that he sort of moves away so we could give this a little bit of a motion here. So it's just a shape that we're creating for that. And then for this one right here, we'll say that if this is up here and this is down here, then we'll want something like this. I could give it a little bit of emotion here. So all you're doing is just drawing a shape in between the other ones. And so our first in between is here. And so as you can see, you can sort of see him going down. Like his head is going down and his arm is coming up, his knee is bending. Like that. And so now we could create an, another in between. But this in between is going to be the in between of both of these. So going from one keyframe to the other, or one dance move to the other. And so this one is going to get kind of kind of interesting. So we have a lot of lines over here. It's a lot of scribble lines. So the way we can navigate this is we know that we want 
uh, we have a nose here, we have a nose here, so we could actually just create sort of a nose here. We have two heads, so we could kind of create a head that connects it. And then we have these two eyes here. And these two eyes, one eye is here, one eye is here, can be kind of easy, uh, can it be kind of tricky to connect them? So we'll just make these two eyes. Like that, and it, and it does look kind of weird, but it'll make all the difference in the world. It'll make sense once we once we see it, right? So, so we have this nose here. We have this nose here, so we'll connect it. Then we have this, so we'll have this coming down here and this coming down here or this coming up this goes up this goes down and so what i'll say is this one's going to be halfway so it's going to be coming down So we'll have that. So essentially, the purple is the before frame, and then the green is the after frame. So now that we know that, we want to give it a no, a line in between these. Then a line in between these. And all we're doing is just creating a line in between these other lines. So notice how I'm going in between this one, the hips. I'm creating one that goes past these. Obviously, these are really close, so I'll just continue to trace these lines. I'll continue to trace these lines. I'll add that line. That line there. And then this one is going up, so. I'll say that. So this one is kind of going down. I'm like an S going down this way. This one is an S going up. Like that. I can just give it a little bit of a, a wish that way. Boom. And the last one is obviously the hair. So the hair, we just scribble in between the two hairs that we have here. And then there's these hairlines here that he has. So I'll just add that there. 
and it will look messy right now but that's just because we want the ideas but this is what we have and so I'm going to go and play around with it. like so. And so the last one that we have is going to be coming back to the last frame or the first frame. And so based off of what we know already, we want to connect this eye with this eye. So have a circle here, have a circle here. And so we're going to create just a circle that connects it then we have our noses so nose here nose here create a nose shape here like this then we got these two circle circle create an in-between circle here and then with these so i have the mouth and i have the other mouth here and so I'll have the mouth here and so I know that with the hair we have the hair coming all over the place so we'll go in between the lines for the hair and so now that we have the hair we'll just start to form the head and the hairline. So to say these hairlines coming down like that. And so it's starting to come together now. And so with this, I, I kind of want to have him like lifting his arm up and creating a pose before it goes back. And so doing that. So pretty much his hips are like this, and these are up here, so I'll create something that's slightly less angled. This is coming down like this. And that is coming down like this. So now we have our last keyframe. And so now let's look at the keyframes and see what we're able to come up with.
And so as you can see, these are going really fast, so we'll be adding some extra frames to it. But if we lower it, so if we drop it down to eight or six, you'll see that motion starting to come together. Like that. Cool. So we'll go ahead and save it, and we'll move on to the next thing. So now that we have our in-betweens done, it's time to create some anticipation with our motion by creating a frame that inches towards the movement that will take place. And so this is to prep for that motion. And we could do that by adding some extra frames. And so what we could do with this now, right, is I'll actually start with a, another, another color. And this color is gonna be our anticipation color. And I could add a new frame. And I could add a new frame before each keyframe, or after each keyframe. And the reason I'm adding it after each keyframe is because the anticipation is supposed to anticipate the next move. So we want to anticipate the move first. And so if the movement is going to be this one right here. We want to anticipate on this frame here. That's after we're standing straight. So typically this animation is going to be, or this frame is focused not necessarily on the motion, but the, but the frame before it. So it's building off of the frame before it. And so what I could do is I could actually have this as a, as a reference. And we're not actually going to be using the frame that comes next. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a pre-motion or a, a very slight motion that's a little bit exaggerated. And so with this, we know that this character is going to be lifting his arm up and going this way. So what we want to do is we could say when this character is getting ready to move, he can sort of lean the other way. So he would be leaning the other way. Actually, I'll change this to a different color because it's really hard to see with my, I'll change this to an orange. Yes, because it's really hard to see what the uh, onion skin that we have. So we have our feet, obviously, and the feet aren't necessarily moving but we'll have them sort of leaning to one side and we'll actually have that lean go to the other side actually now that I think about it so it's sort of exaggerating where he's already going And typically this anticipation is going to be the opposite motion. So he's sort of leaning this way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have him lean the other way. And we'll just have him with this shoulders coming up. So we'll have him leaning the other way. Sort of having his head come down mouth come down
can tell when we hide the onion skin, we'll have it sort of like this. So now let's actually just test it out, see how it looks. So he comes down and then he comes up like that. And so now let's actually add another one to this one. So we know that he's in this motion like this. So it's getting ready to move down. So in anticipation is he's probably going to shift to the other side. So we'll say that he's going to shift here. His hips are going to shift slightly. And this knee isn't going to be as high. This arm is going to come over a little bit. This arm is going to come up a little bit. And this head is going to come up a little bit. So I'm pretty much going to shift everything over slightly. So therefore, this is going to be slightly different as well. And so the next one that we have is going to be based off of this one. So we know that this one is going to be coming down. So we could actually copy this frame. So I'll go through, copy it, and then I'll paste it. And I'll just change it so I'll transform, flip horizontal, and after I flip horizontal, I'll just modify it a little bit like that. Perfect. So now let's check it out. And I'll just speed it up a little bit. 
So go to eight frames per second. like that. So now we'll save it and we'll move on to the next one. And so now what we could do is we could overshoot our animation or exceed the motion that we have. And so with that, we can, with our final key pose that we have, we can make an ending that feels a lot more dynamic. And that's where things get really interesting. And so let's go ahead and create that one. So in our timeline here, uh, essentially, we have our red key poses, as you can see. And so we have this key pose here. We have this key pose here. And we have this key pose here. So what we're going to do is before each one of those key poses, we're actually going to create a new frame. And we're just going to create a new empty frame before each one of those. like that. And so what we're going to do, it's actually going to be the opposite. We're going to base our frame off of this one. And so with that, I'll start with a, I'll say a, a dark green for this because I want to use a green. And what we could do is essentially we're exaggerating this. So we're going to take our, our base keyframes here and we're going to say this knee bend is going to be a little lower. This is going to be a little higher. It's going to be lower. This is going to be higher like that. And we're just going to exaggerate all the movements. So he's coming up. So I could say this comes up like this. And this is going to come over like that. And then this head is going to come down. And the hair is going to come down as well. Like that. So now it's sort of a, a bounce. So we'll do the same thing with this one. But with this one, it since it's pretty much the same keyframe, we'll just copy it. So I'll just copy this keyframe and we'll paste this frame and then I will just switch it so we're going to transform flip horizontal and I'll just line it up like that so now there we go it's starting to look really nice now And then the last one is actually coming down to this. So what we do is we're actually going to take this one right here and we're going to 
make it seem like he's sort of squashing down. So we'll say, okay, he has these legs and stuff. And we'll say that his hips are coming down. Like that. His head is coming down. So we know the head is there. We have the body. like that. So now it does look kind of messy as usual, but it makes sense. So now let's go ahead and test it out. Like that. And so now that we have our overshoot frames, it's time to clean them up. And so we have our overshoot frames done we have our other frames done, so now it's time to uh, clean up all the draft animation that we did. And we can do that by adding new line work and just making it look cleaner. And so we'll go ahead and do that. So with this, we, we've come a long way, right? And so now what we wanna do is we wanna actually lock this and we'll turn this into a transparent frame. We'll turn, create a new layer We'll just call this cleanup. And each one of these will have a new frame. So we have a total of 13 frames of animation that we'll be playing around with. And some of them are duplicates, so we won't be having to create completely new frames, but we'll first start off by uh, creating our first, uh, our first one. And so I'll just go through and it's essentially just tracing.
So we got the first frame done. And what I am actually going to do is I'm going to bump up this brush to about five and actually read just to trace over some of it. Because I want this to have uh, thicker lines. And so I'll actually get to that, but I'll actually just start tracing over the other lines now. And so, like I said, like most of the work is already done with this. Essentially, all you got to do is just continue to trace all the lines that you already created. You could add extra elements if you want, but it's not necessary. Because you already spent all the time doing all the other stuff. And so with this, this is actually a, you know, you could put on some music. This is more busy work.
And so now that we have these, we're pretty much going to be multiplying or duplicating some of these. So I know that this keyframe can be copied and pasted here. So I'll just copy and paste this. And then what I'll do is I will transform, flip horizontal. Now just move it over like that. Perfect. And I know this keyframe is a copy of this keyframe. So I'll copy. And then I'll paste. And I'll flip horizontal. Like that. And then this keyframe is a copy of this keyframe, I believe. So then I'll go through and paste and I will right click, transform, flip horizontal, like that. And then these keyframes are going to be different, except for this one. This one's going to be the same, but this one I'm actually going to be deleting. And so these last two keyframes are the ones that I, I'll be fixing up now.
and voila we are completed with our stuff so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and actually remove these keyframes I'll just remove them so we don't need them they're just copies of the ones that we already had we'll save and then we'll take a look at our animation so far that we already have so I'll get rid of this this is the one that I have like that so now it's time to color so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add a color pass and with our line work done the black lines on the white background we're going to give it some depth by uh, coloring it now so what we have here right I'll go ahead and I'll just duplicate my layer and I'll just call this color layer. And I'll just copy this one and I'll go through and we'll start coloring our, our stuff. So I'll just start with one color after another. And so with my color palette, I always like to have a brown for, actually make sure to have this unselected, there you go. So I like to have a brown for my uh, character, so my character Roscoe, typically have a brown for it. And notice how it's not actually coloring, and that's typically because I have some, you know, breaks in the line work. And so I'll just be able to go through and, and patch those up, and when I do, I'll be able to add more color to it. So. And through patching up this line work until it actually fills out. Like that, perfect. So I'll just do one color at a time. So now, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and I'll get my green. And that's typically the, I have like a greenish color for my, for my characters here. So with that green, I'll go ahead and start adding that to it. You may have to patch things up by connecting these lines.
perfect. So now what I'll do is I'll do the eyes. And the eyes can be kind of difficult sometimes because you always forget to do them because it's on a white background. Like that. And then I'll have the mouth. So now Like that. So now I have a, a green shirt. Let's add that green shirt and we'll tweak it a little bit so that we get the green that we want. Like that. And then he has some gray pants. So I'll go through, get these gray pants. Like that. And then I have some really dark gray shoes. Add that there and boom so now let's check out what we have so save it and after we do that check out what we got like that and so now we could move on to just cleaning it up adding some extra timing to it and going from there okay and so for this what we're going to do is we're going to play with some easing in and out and the reason we're doing that is because we want to play with the timing a little bit so that it gives the ex the animation some extra character and so we want it to be fluid we want it to be lively and bouncy and in order to do that, we have to just play around with some timing and add, maybe add some keyframes to, to a little bit of things. So let's go ahead and move on to that. And so here we are, we have our frames here. What I'll do is I'll just go through another pass and, and check out what we have so far. That's looking pretty decent. Uh, but what I wanna do is I already have this frame right here and so what I'll do is I will actually copy this frame and I'll add it to the end but with this frame what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, make it I'm going to stretch it and so when I do that it's going to have a very interesting effect so I'm going to stretch it up and then I'm actually going to stretch this one down or squash it down like that and you can see that there's a, a frame right here that's our cleanup frame so what we'll do is we'll just turn that into a guide layer and we'll actually turn that off and so now let's see what this see what happens now and so you see there's a bounce now So that's cool, we have a bounce. 
And so what I'll do is actually, actually make it a little bit skinnier, and then this one will make a little bit wider. So with this one, what I'll do is I will actually go through and I'll say, okay, so we have that. So we'll make a, we'll just duplicate this frame and I'll make this a new keyframe and I will just ease it in. So I'll just create a little bit of anticipation. And so just a slight movement going down and then he's coming over. So this is like this. I'll probably add another keyframe here. And I'm just going to actually exaggerate this even more. So I'm just going to move this to the side here and bring it down here. when this comes up I'm going to actually make a new keyframe here as well and this is actually going to lift up up like that because I know that this is going to be coming down, so then I'll say this is going to lift up, and then it's going to come down. And then we'll do the exact same thing with this one, where we're going to add an extra keyframe, and then the first keyframe we're actually going to exaggerate to the left. So, like that, and we're going to drop it down a little bit. And so with this one, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the, with the other frame of this one. And so we're going to, with this one, we're going to lift it up, up, and over. See how we go from here, up and over, and then it bounces down, and then up and over. And actually what we could do is we could add an extra bounce to this. So we'll add this keyframe here. And so we'll say that this one is going to be up. And this one is going to bounce down. We'll drop it down, we'll make it wider, and then we have that. So now it's going to, we have 20, 20 frames now, and we'll see what happens with it. So here we go. Just like that. And so what we could do is we could actually pause on one of them. So each one of these frames, we could pause for a good second. Like 
так. Just like that. And so now we have it, it's bouncier, it's more dynamic, it has some character to it, and it's all of these frames that we just did. And so at first we started off with just a simple the simple storyboard. So we started off with just storyboarding as you can see here. So I'll go ahead and play that. And then we evolve to our line work. And then we added our color. Like that. And so now we're done with our animation. And so the next thing that we can do is export it up. So we'll go through and I'll go to export movie. And what I want to do is I want to create an image sequence. And so I'll create a new folder, say PNG C points right there animated sticker, I'll click save, and then from this, DPI, all this looks good, go to YouTube bit, full document size, smooth, export, so I'll just export all these as frames, and we're at 12 frames per second, and we have 24 frames right here, so when we have our PNG sequence, it should actually be 24. And that's what we have. We have 24 frames right there. So if I open it up and I go through and I scroll through all of our animation, scroll through all the images, you'll see I'll be able to go through. Like that. So we've exported our animation into our PNG sequence and we will start to move on to the next thing. And so now that we have our animation done and we have it exported, we did all that stuff, uh, it's time to augment our sticker. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an augmented reality experience for the sticker that we created and we're going to add the animation that we just created to that. And so it's going to be combining the sticker making process with the animation process and through augmented reality we uh, create a new experience that's better than both of those. And so before we get started with that, we need to know how we augment, right? And so with the, uh, we already have our sticker made, and so we're gonna bring it to life. We're gonna let it come to life. And so first we're gonna think about, you know, what do we want to come to life? And obviously we're gonna start with our sticker. And so then we're going to digitize the sticker. We're gonna set up the Unity game engine, install the Vuforia SDK, create an AR image target, add animated sequences to it. Uh, we might kit bash some assets as well and use the animation timeline to animate that experience. And then we're gonna add some sound and some VFX to make it more immersive. And so let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so first things first is we're going to build a roadmap. And what this means is that we're gonna create a list of features that we wanna include into our AR experience. And so it's good to build a roadmap so that you have an idea of where you're going rather than wandering aimlessly down this creative journey. And so we'll just actually do that. And I'll do that with Google Docs. And so in Google Docs, what I have is a blank sheet and I'll just call this roadmap. And we'll say that with it, I want the experience to essentially be uh, a sticker with the character dancing to music. Music is playing in the 
background and we will have Roscoe's name. So we'll have Roscoe's name above. And then we'll have some we'll have some shapes rotating around him. So we'll say shapes rotate around him. Just like that. So we have a sticker with uh, the character dancing to music. Obviously the music is playing in the background and we'll have Roscoe's name above uh, and we'll have it getting bigger and smaller or we'll just say above animating in to the scene and then we'll say shapes rotating around him so we got four different things that we're going to include uh, four things are simple but you know we'll go through that process of of um, of adding stuff to it and so with our roadmap done what we want to do is we want to digitize our sticker and so we need to create a digital copy of our sticker so that we could actually uh, augment it and so the reason that's important is because in order for the AR experience to work we need to actually have it recognized as kind of a QR code in the AR experience and so what we're going to do is we're going to get our phone and we're going to digitize our experience Okay, so what I have is I have my sticker right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my phone. After I take my phone, I'm just gonna go through and take a picture of it. Like that. Just clean the lens so that it looks good. Like that. And so after I take the picture, I'll go through and email that to myself. after I email it to myself and so what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to open it up in Photoshop now that I have it in Photoshop what I can do is I could copy the layer and then I could do some tone mapping and stuff so I'll go to my curves and I'll have the white this will be the whitest white part and this will be the darkest part which is the black and that gives me a lot of uh, con contrast and so now that I have that I'm actually going to rotate the image I want the image to be rotated and I'll need it to be rotated again like that and then I'll go through and crop it like that and then I'll actually start to add a lasso around it so that I can cut out this dark part, this black part. So I'll just cut that out. And now that I have that, what I'll do is I'll just add a background to it. And it'll just be a white background. And I'll just essentially export it as a JPEG. So what I'll do is I'll save this, save, and I'll say AR sticker Roscoe, boom, and then I'll export it as a JPEG. AR sticker Roscoe, that already exists because it's already a JPEG, so then 
I'll just do underscore one. I'll click save. And so now I have my AR sticker Roscoe right here that I have just like that. And so now that I have that, what I can do is we can move on to the other parts. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the Unity game engine. And so that's going to allow us to do our AR experience. And so in order to do the AR experience, we actually need to uh, use software to do that. And so we'll get the Unity game engine set up. And from there, we'll go from there. And so we're at the Unity.com and this is where you download the Unity game engine. So if you've never used the Unity game engine before, this is where you get it from. We go ahead, go to get started. And then after you get started, you go to individual and you choose personal. So get started with the free personal account. And then we'll click either start here or for returning users, you click that. And from there, you go ahead and agree and download and it'll download the Unity, the Unity game engine uh, hub for you. And once you do that, we'll go ahead and create uh, we'll open up the Unity Hub, and with the Unity Hub, this is where you have all your Unity projects. Uh, in your in the Learn tab, this is where you learn how to use the game engine, and so with tutorials and other projects. And then we have the Community tab, which is where you're able to create blogs and stuff like that, and uh, connect with the community. And with the installs, this is where you download your installs. And so I have the latest version right now. And so what I'll do is if you want to add a version, you just go to add and I highly recommend the recommended release. So go ahead and click the recommended release and then add your dev tools, which is visual studio and then Android build support and iOS build support. And then we'll go through and you agree to all the terms and licenses and then, and you just click next. And then you do the same thing for the A Android SDK and NDK and you click done and it'll start to download your Unity version. And so once you're done with that, we'll go to the arrow, we'll click new and we'll call this AR sticker. So this AR sticker and uh, I'll call it AR sticker tutorial. And you want to make sure to choose the, the 3D template here and click create. And so now that we have the Unity game engine open, we need to set up a couple of things first. And so we'll go to file and then build settings. And then the build settings, we're going to change it to Android. So switch platforms. And then we're going to go to player settings and in player settings, I'll actually dock my player settings to the side where the inspector is. And I'll get rid of this and I'll go to in the color space, make sure it's at gamma. And then in the quality, we make sure that that is at medium like that. And we're pretty much set to go. And so just as a brief overview, we have our inspector, which has our, all our settings, the hierarchy, which has all the stuff in our scene, the viewport, which is the way we look at the scene as a whole. The main camera is how we look at the game view. The directional light is, you know, just sort of the sun that we have. And so game objects have these different components that you'll see in the inspector to modify them. And then we have our project settings or our project, which has all our files from in our project, in our project console. And then, uh, then the console has all the stuff that we need to, uh, to debug our experiences and stuff. So that's the Unity game engine. That's what we have set up. And so now it's time to add the SDK. And so we have the Unity game engine set up. And so now it's time to install the Vuforia engine SDK. And we're going to do that for Unity to create AR support features for the webcam. And so we aren't going to be learning how to build mobile apps in this, but 
uh, we will learn how to test our webcam with uh, these features. And it just allows us to, you know, prototype very quickly and uh, go from there. And so we're here at the developer.vuforia.com website. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to uh, download the support for AR, uh, mainly to use the webcam features in it. And so we'll go to download, go to add Vuforia engine. You need to log in, so set up an account. And then once you do that, you click agree. And then we can go through and add my animated stickers. Boom. Go to the folder and uh, add the Vuforia engine package. And so after you do that, we go to Unity again, and then we'll go to Assets, and then Import Package, Custom Package. And from there, we'll go to where we downloaded the Vuforia package. Then we'll click Import. And then we'll click Update. And so now that we have that done, we can go to the editor to make sure that the file's added. And then we could go to the Vuforia configuration right here. And this is where our settings are. And so the first thing that we'll want to do is we want to add a license. So we'll go ahead and add license. And in our licenses, right, uh, I have many of them that, we, that I have created. But I'll go ahead and get development key. And the development key is the one that's free that allows us to uh, test out our AR experiences. So I'll just say AR sticker like that. And then I'll click uh, the checkbox below and it creates a development key. And so you'll see that this is all we'll need. And so we'll just click copy and we'll go back and we'll click paste. Then the next thing that we'll need to do is turn off track device pose. And this is because Whenever we have an AR experience, if you don't have, uh, if it's not looking, if the camera's not looking at the image target, then track device pose will say, if it's not looking at it, it'll still play the AR experience. But we don't want that with our image targets and the stickers that we have. And so what we want to do is we want to say, uh, when it's not look, when the camera's not looking at the sticker, we don't want it to play. And so in order to do that, you have to turn off track device pose. And then lastly, what we'll have is we'll have the webcam. We want the webcam to be on as our play mode and then choose the right webcam that you have. And then we'll have everything set up. So we're ready to go to the next step. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to create an AR image target. And so we're gonna set up an AR work environment and create an image target based off of the sticker that we were able to digitize. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so. In our Unity project, we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call that images. And we're going to open it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the folder that has our image. So our AR sticker image right here of Roscoe. And we're going to just drag and drop that in. And so you see it's kind of distorted. And so what we'll do is we'll go through and we're going to change the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. And we're going to do that. And once we do that, it sets it up just nicely for us. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to scenes and then we're going to create new scene. And we'll call this a R sticker. We're going to open it and it's time to add all our stuff into it. And so the first thing we want to do is right click, go to Vuforia engine, add an AR camera. And we're going to delete the main camera. Then we're going to go through to Vuforia engine, and then we're going to add an image target. And this image target is going to be the reference to our actual AR, uh, AR sticker that we have. And so notice how in it we have a, uh, blank sheet right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit select, select our sticker, and now we have our AR image. Our sticker has a, a image target right here. Just like that. And so we could go ahead and save it. 
and then we create an empty and I'll call that air content and I'll make that a child of the image target and that's where we'll put all our AR content in. And so just to test it out, what I'll do is I will create a cube. So I'll just, in the AR content, I'll create a, a 3D cube and then I'll shrink it so that it's not so big. I'll click save and we'll test out our AR experience first. So I'll go ahead and click play. So as you can see here, we have our cube, just like that. Perfect, 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 perfect. So now that we got that working, it's time to build on what we already just did. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to import our animated PNG sequence and by importing that, we're able to add animation to our AR scene. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we have is we have a cube here, right? We have this cube here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn off this cube. And we're going to go to our assets and we're going to create a new folder called animation. And so with that new folder, we'll open it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the PNG sequence that we just, we exported earlier. And we're going to just add that PNG sequence folder in. So we're going to add the whole folder. So now that we have the folder in, you'll notice that we have tons of images, right? And so what we'll need to do is again, turn all these into 2D Sprite UI. So we'll go ahead, click apply. So selecting them all and then changing the texture type and then clicking apply. Like that. So now it has a a transparent background for all of them. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add our PNG sequence in to our scene. We're going to do that by dragging, selecting all of them, and we're going to drag them into the scene. And by doing that, it creates a, a new animation object. And so we'll just name this AR sticker sequence like that. And then I'll click save and it creates a new animator and an animation file. And we also have our uh, file right here. So now the next thing that we want to do is we'll make this uh, a child of our AR content. We'll zero it out. We will rotate it. And we'll actually make it smaller. So I'll make it smaller first. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll turn this to, I believe it's 90. Yeah, make it 90. And then I'll just make it a little bigger like that. And so I'll, I'll bring it forward just slightly. And then when it comes to rendering layers, I'll turn this to one. So I'll make the rendering layer be one for that. And so that's, uh, that's what we have. So we've imported our animation sequence into it. So let's test it out and see what happens. Just like that. And so we can move it up a little bit. We can make it a little bigger just to cover more room. It's up to you what you want to do with this. But we have our sticker right there. And so now that we have our sticker, we can start adding some other stuff to it so that we could 
uh, start actually creating a, a more robust experience. And so we'll start to kit bash uh, some of the stuff by just finding stuff off the internet and then using techniques to add those elements to our scene. And so before we start with that, let's recall, right? Like, so our roadmap was to uh, have a sticker with the dancing character. We did that. And so then we want to have music playing in the background. So we'll find some music and then we want to have some shapes rotating around him. And we also want to have Roscoe's name animating into the scene. So we'll get to those, but we want to find some shapes to use. And so we're going to look on the asset store to find some shapes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to window asset store, and then we'll go to search online. And with that, what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to say, let's find some toys. Roscoe likes toys. So let's find some toys. We'll go to free assets. And we'll say we got cloud toys, we got cars, delivery vehicles, Christmas stuff. And so I'll say we have these cars. So we'll say gems or boom box. Let's see if I can find a boom box or radio. Go to free assets. Huh. Low poly wasteland props. That actually looks interesting. I might actually want to add this to it. Yeah, that's what I'll add to it. I'll add this to set a scene for him. So, low poly wasteland props. We'll open that in Unity. And so we'll have a package manager, low poly wasteland props. We'll just download it import that in like that and then I'll go back and I'll just look for like a radio And so I'll have a vintage style radio. Um, yeah, I'll just go with the vintage style radio. I think that's the, the easiest one to do. So I'll select the vintage style radio. And go to add asset. Open in Unity. I'm going to download it. And we're going to import it in. So now that we have those, I'll go back to my scene. And I'll go to the assets that I have. So if I look closely at the wasteland pop prop, so I'll choose the prefab of it. And I should have the props. Yes, so I'll have a props scene right there. So I'll just add this to my AR content. And what I'll do is I'll shrink it down because it should not be that big. So I'll shrink it down. I'll zero it out. So zero, zero, zero. I'll rotate it. So I'll rotate it negative 90 degrees. 
and I'll drop it down like this. And then I'll actually move it back so that Roscoe is standing on it in a in a way that uh, makes sense. And so, you know, just lower this that so it makes it look like he's standing on it. And it can be kind of difficult to see what's behind it, but we got it. And so I have this one. I'll move it back a little bit. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the low poly vintage radio. Oh, and there's some bonus ads at some. Oh, that's just a rounded cube. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So bonus assets, there's a prefab, and then I have the vintage radio. So I'll add that to my AR content, and then I'm just going to shrink it down as usual. And then I'm going to uh, actually, yeah, I'm gonna shrink it down, move it over here, rotate it. And so an easy way to rotate is holding control and then it'll sort of stick to certain spots. So I'll do that. And then I'll rotate it again, holding control, rotating it back. And then we'll add this to the back of it. So let's say that I want the radio to be on the on the tire so I'll do that then I'll angle it make it larger so that people can see it like so. So now that I got that set up, let's actually go ahead and try to t test it. So with it, we'll go here. So I'm having a little difficulty with the prop. And I wonder what's going on with the prop. So let's check it out. Oh, it's because it's static. And so what we'll want to do is we want to take this and we want to turn it off of static. So change the children. Perfect. So we don't want it to be static because if it's static, then it's not going to move. That's not what we want. And so we'll go ahead and switch it up again. Test it out. There we go. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And so it's coming along really nicely. And so now it's time to animate the experience with our timeline. So we're going to use the timeline to animate some extra assets to it based off of the roadmap that we have. And so looking back at what we have, right? So we have a sticker of it dancing. And so we could go through and strike through that. And then we have we didn't add some objects actually rotating around them. We just added a scene. And so we'll go through and I'll just strike through this as well. And so what we want to do now is we want to animate Roscoe's name animating above him in the scene. And so 
we're going to do is we're going to do that with our animation timeline. And so for the timeline, we'll go to our package manager and in the package manager, we go to unity registry and we go down and we say timeline right here. And so if you don't have timeline already, I already have it installed, but go ahead and install the timeline. And then from there, we go to window, we go to sequencing and we go to timeline and we'll go down and we'll just dock this down here. And in our image target, we'll create a new empty object and we'll call this animation timeline. And when we do that, we'll be able to create a new timeline asset on this. So we'll click that and we'll go to our animation assets and we'll just add the animation there. Then from there, we'll go through and we'll say the wrap mode will be a loop and we don't want it to play on a wake. And then we're actually going to hit the, this gear or not the gear, but the lock symbol so that it doesn't go away when we click other game objects. And I'll show you the difference. See how when you click other game objects, the timeline goes away. But when you click on this, when it stays there, if you lock it, it doesn't go away now. And then we'll go to our frame rate right here. We'll go to the gear symbol. And we'll go to frame rate. We'll go to uh, film and we'll change that to 24. And so the next thing that we'll do is we'll go to our image target and we'll change the uh, target behaviors. And so we'll say on target found and that's when you see, when the camera sees the actual image, then we'll drag the timeline, animation timeline over and we'll say, we're gonna play a function from the playable director called play. And so that says that when the camera looks at the image target, will play the animation timeline. And then when the target is lost, when it's not looking at the, at the, when the camera's not looking at the image target, we'll go to the playable director and we'll pause it just like that. So that's what we want. So we'll have that pausing and playing. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna first set up our animation from our sticker. And so what we'll do is we'll go here, we'll drag the animated sticker down to the bottom here we'll create an animation track and the next thing that we'll do is we'll go to our projects panel so our projects we'll go to animation we'll go to png sequence and we want this sequence here and so when we press the sequence we'll add this to the space here and so now when we play it it's going to play our sequence that we have just like that and so the next thing that we want to do is we want to have it go to loop. And so when we have it go to loop, it'll continue playing just like that. And so we'll click save. And the next thing we'll do is we'll go to AR content. We'll right click. We'll go to 3D object and we'll go to text, text mesh pro. And so if before we do that, actually, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have all the text mesh pro stuff in. So we'll go to package manager. We'll go to text mesh pro, which I already have it installed. But if you don't install text mesh pro. And then after that, we'll go through and I'll go again and say uh, 3D object text test mesh pro. And then I will go in and I'll say import TMP essentials. And then I'll say import TMP examples and extras. And from there, what I'll do is I will actually shrink this down. So I'll just make this smaller. And then after I make it smaller, I'm going to rotate it around. Or before I do that, actually, I'll create a new empty object. And I'll call this text folder. And I'll zero that out. So I have that zero, zero. And then I'll have this TMP text be uh, part of that. Then I'll zero this out. 
and when I rotate, I'll actually rotate with my uh, text holder rather than the other one. And so I'll do that. I'll have that be 90. Then I will go ahead and zero this out as well, like that. I'll go through and I will shrink this down. And I will lift this above. So I'll say that. And then with this, what I'll do is I'll say, I want, call this Roscoe. Call this Roscoe's Boogie. And I'll just center it. And I'll change the color to, I'll change the color to like the you know, teal, the turquoise. And then I'll have a outline of, we'll say, pink. And then I'll just soften it up. I'll dilate it a little bit more, like that. And I have Roscoe's Boogie, just like that. And so the next thing I will do is I'll drag the Text Mesh Pro down, Text Mesh Pro text down. I'll click an animation track. And what I'll have is I'll have it animate in. So I'll click the record button here, click start recording. And then I'll have this be the position. We'll add key, position here, add key. And then the scale. I'll add a key and then I'll go down here and I'll change the position. So I'll have the position be lower and I'll have the scale be smaller like that. So now when I animate it, it comes up. But what if I wanted to give it a little bit of a bounce? So what I could do is I can, I have the have it animating in for the first second. So I'll go through and I'll go down four frames and I'll make it big and I'll lift it up like that. So now it'll get big and then come back down. And I'll say that I want this to be a, a 15 second, I'll do a 10 second loop and so what I'll do is I'll add key add key add key right here and then that 11th second at 11 seconds what I'll do is I will lower it and make it smaller like I did before. And so the thing is, again, I could make it, I could bounce it out again as well. So two, three, four, I'll do five seconds this time or five frames this time. I'll make it big and then I'll lift it up. And so now it comes down and it animates out like that. Perfect. So I can stop recording just like that. So I'll go ahead and save it. And so now 
it was we wanted Roscoe's name to animate above in the scene. And so now that we have that, let's go ahead and test it out. So, and everything that's in the AR content folder works. Boom. We have that. So let's test it out. Just like that. And so what I could do now is I could make it more immersive by adding some visual effects and some sounds. And so what I'll do is I'll add some sounds first and then let will make it pop by adding a little particle effect or some animation uh, to really make it pop. And so I'll do that now. So with it, right, like we could go to our asset store. So we'll go to the asset store by clicking search online. And then let's say hip hop. Add a little hip hop beat, free assets, and music in isolation, 100% free. That's a that's a large package though, so I want to make sure not to choose a huge package. Uh, just choose something that's you know has a modest size to it. So it's 281. Mm. I'll go to the trip hop music because I've used this before. And so open in Unity, trip hop, and I'll go ahead and click import. And from there, choose the trip hop. I'll import these. So after that, what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll create a new uh, empty object. So create empty and I'll call this audio manager. And with the audio manager, I'm going to go to components and I'll click audio and I'll choose an audio source. After I have that, then I can drag this down and I could add an audio track. And so now time to add the music. So I'll go to my assets and I go to trip hop and I'll just start listening to some sounds to see which ones I want. And I'll go with this one, Ice Cold. So I'll do that. And it's really big, so or it's really long. So what I'll do is I'll just trim it down. I want to try to get like an infinite loop though. And so what I'll do is I'll try to get this infinite loop going by creating a loop first and then uh, having it phase out. So let's see how this works. So it sort of ends right here. So let's see how that goes. So we like that. So we could do that. And so one of the things is it exceeds this time frame here. And so what if I wanted it to, uh, I wanted to change the time of the text could go in and edit an animation window and I could actually bring this in and move it over here like that. So I can move this to actual 10. That. And so I moved it. And so now when I see it and I play, And we 
have a loop. Perfect. And so because this is all tied to the, to the timeline, as long as the timeline is working, everything will work good. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could turn off play on and wake, and that will just, you know, make things less buggy. And so we'll just turn off play on and wake. And then let's actually make, let's actually find some VFX. And so I'll go to free assets and there's some magic VFX here. We have some explosions, cartoon free effects right here. Oh, I'll just go with the muzzle flashes because I really like these muzzle flashes. They're really nice. And so I'll go to open. I'll open the sprite muzzle flashes. So now that I have the sprite muzzle flashes, it's pretty much what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to do what we did with importing game RPNG sequence already, except where it's going to be muzzle, muzzle flashes. So go to sprite muzzle flashes, and then I'll go to red or blue, and I'll just add the whole sequence in here. So add this whole sequence, and I'll just call it and the new animation one. You could call it whatever you want, uh, but I'll just have this one in. Then I'll probably add another one. I'll add a purple Uzi. Yeah, purple Uzi. And then I'll label this animation two. We'll go with that. So we'll add these to our animation content or AR content and I'll just zero these out and I'll also zero that out as well and so it's really big as we know so then I'll just make it smaller and what I'll do is I'll give this the effect of it you know sort of rotating uh, actually propelling our our little canvas thing that uh, Ross goes on. So we'll treat this like a like a rocket propulsion. So I'll have this be at the bottom like that, and then I'll just orient this out. So I have this at the bottom, and then I'll have this one being rotate it like that then I'll duplicate it and I'll essentially have it do the opposite so 90 do zero there and then I'll have this rotate out like that and then I'll have this Uzi and I'll have it do negative 90 just like that and we should be good so let's go ahead and test it out So now that's what we had. Obviously, I could I could bring this down a little bit because it sort of comes out the the top a little bit more than I wanted to. And so I got that. And then I could bring these down obviously a little bit too. Uh, but this is what we got now. This is our animation. This is our AR sticker that we created.
And so as we, and so as we look back at it, right, we were able to add some music to the background. We'll just cross that off. And then we're also able to add the name Roscoe's Boogie as well. And so with our roadmap, we completed all the stuff in our roadmap. We modified the shape so that it's, uh, we modified the shapes rotating and we have it, um, actually we could add a, we could add a shape to it. So let's do, let's do a comet. Have a comet rotating around. So we'll say free assets and set hand painted icons. We'll say a star. We'll try a star and make a star. Let's see what this is. It's icon packs. Yeah, polygon starter pack. Let's do that. So open in Unity. And I think this will be the icing on the cake. Packages are very small, so which is great. So go to import. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll add a new uh, empty object and I'll call this uh, object container. So object container and it's zero zero. So we want it to be zero zero. And then what I'll do is I'll call low poly wasteland props, not low poly wasteland props. We want uh what was it polygon starter go to prefabs and then there's a lot of different stuff that we can use and so i'll say we want this plane here so we'll add that to the object container i'll have a water gun an object container we'll have a sword an object container we'll have a coin an object container and we'll have a car in the object container and so now that I have those what I'll do is I will make them all smaller so I'll shrink them down to size like that and then I'll also zero them out and so now what I could do is I can orient them around individually so first I'll just go through and, and rotate them all so rotate them 90 degrees and then I'll rotate them along the x-axis uh, I don't want to do it yeah I'll just rotate them like this and then I'll just bring them out one by one. So have this plane come out like this and I'll make it a little smaller. Then I'll have the car, make that one a little bit bigger and I'll have that come out like that and I'll actually rotate it around. So I'll have that be what, 90? Yeah. And then I'll have the water gun. I'll have to make that larger. So the water gun. And I'll bring that out. So I'll bring it out. And then I'll just orient it. Like that. And then I'll have another prototype that I have. Was well, it's the sword? So I'll have this go back. Oh, 
like that. And then last but not least, so I'll type I'll need this one. And this is a coin. And I'll have this one be off in a diagonal here. So with that off in a diagonal, this one I'll have right here. This I'll have right here. And this I'll have right there. So now we have our objects here. I'll just bring this out a little bit more. Bring this out a little bit more. Bring this out a little bit more. Perfect, like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to create it so that it's rotating this way. And so I'll have to actually move the objects a little more center, looks like. And so by doing that, I need to move the plane out and move the sword out like that move the icon a little bit in and then I'll try it out. Like that. And so what I could do is I could go into my timeline and go to animation timeline, bring that in and I'll bring the object container in, add an animation to it. And so I'll essentially go with it and I'll say this is a object and I'll click add key for rotation like that and then I want the rotation to be finishing at the last frame I want the rotation to be at the last frame I want that rotation to be Essentially, negative three fifty nine, three fifty nine. And so, negative three fifty nine for that. And then this one, we want it to be zero for that. So we'll just update that key. And then halfway through, I want it to be, was it negative 180? And so with this one, negative 180, we want this to be negative 90. And then I want this to be negative 270. Like that. So. Here we have negative 90, we have negative 180, we have negative 270, and then we have negative 359. And in this, I'll say negative 1, probably the best. So update the key. So we have it come in through there. like that. So we'll end it.
like that. And so we'll save it and then we'll test it out again. Okay, here we go. Like that and so we've come a long way with this right and so to wrap up we explored how to approach animation how to export an animated sequence for other software turning the sticker into a digital work of art and then we explored unity for creating some AR experiences and then we learned how to bring physical art to life with animation visual effects and sound and we also did some kit bashing and added some 3d models to it and so now it's a it's a very unique experience that we were able to create and with it i'm i'm really proud with it and excited to see what you're able to come up with by following this approach for your work again you know this project will be available to play around with on your own and i'm just really curious and excited to see what you are able to do with this new skill set and so again my name is stephen christian and i'm glad that i was able to introduce you to a new way of approaching sticker making and creating AR experiences, or even learning how to animate and doing a lot of different things with the tools that are available. And so with that, again, Steven Christian, uh, immersive artist that teaches you how to augment things that, uh, that you're able to touch and make more immersive. And with that, I hope to see you with another, another opportunity with the creative tutorial, combining art and technology to make something innovative and immersive. Thank you and have a good one.